Good morning, Welltown and Old Bethel United Methodist Churches. Um, it is Sunday, November 15th, and here I am coming to you once again from my living room. Um, I hope that everybody has had a, a good week. Um, I know it's definitely been a different week for me as I've been um, sitting at home most of the week. Um, I've gotten outside a little bit to, to walk some every day um, just to try to keep moving some. Um, earlier in the week, it was definitely a little bit harder, but as the week has progressed for me, um, things have, have gotten a whole lot better. Um, today, it really feels more, and yesterday, kind of more just like a, a cold, um, kind of really much in my, in my nose, and so I think it's all getting out. My energy level is, is much better. Um, not having, I mean, early, the times I was having some trouble um, just breathing, taking, I have to take some deep breaths, um, but for the most part, all that is, is good, so I'm hoping that tomorrow um, I'll uh, talk to the health department and they'll check on me and I'll be cleared to go um, 10 days or so after my symptoms started showing up. Um, so I should be, should, be, um, should be cleared, at least that's my, my hope. Um, I'm sure that some of you are wondering what might happen as um, this week unfolds, um, especially with the governor's new uh, order um, that will go into effect tonight at midnight or 12.01 tomorrow morning. Um, it does not affect us as a religious worshiping community. Um, there is part of it where the, the one, the part that says uh, from 250 down to 25. Um, luckily, there's also a kind of other appendixes, I guess, to the statement that says worshiping religious services can take place with more than 25 if certain uh, other regulations are followed. And we already follow those. Um, very much all the things that we're doing with wearing masks inside, with the, the questions that we're making sure everybody is, is, is answering appropriately and registering, uh, keeping our, our distance. So, um, so we can still continue to have worship. And so hopefully next Sunday, we'll be able to have worship together in our sanctuaries. Um, so I will look forward to that. Um, and so this week, um, not sure exactly how our Bible studies will all take place at uh, Welltown, the food bank will be open this week uh, as of right now. Um, this has been an interesting November because of other of the, the virus and, and Watts and then Thanksgiving will be happening on a Thursday. So um, we hopefully we'll have um, lots of guests this coming week. And so we'll need lots of hands to help as much as we can. Um, Again, making sure that we're keeping our distance. Um, so when we do gather, we will have to make sure that we are wearing our masks. And I just implore and ask everybody to to be sure to wear wear your mask. Um, I know some of you may think it's not necessary, but um, I, I I think that the way that I got it um, was just being a little bit more relaxed um, in in certain settings. And um, but and I, then I thought I just had uh, just uh, seasonal type stuff, but it, I, it it turned out to be more. And so I'm glad that um, I was informed, got tested, and prevented uh, me from interacting more with with any of you all, as we we may have done this past week. Um, so so going forward, I just hope that we can continue to do what we can, and and serve and worship God. And hopefully, if we all do do our part to help in whatever way we can. Um, Christmas may be, hopefully will be a, maybe a little bit more joyous than we're thinking it might be right now. That may mean that Thanksgiving will be different, but um, if we, we hold strong, keep our faith and, and work as a community, um, hope things hopefully will, will be better. Um, a couple announcements about upcoming things. Um, as we know, Christmas is coming. Um, six weeks away um, and so on Saturday the 28th um, so the Saturday after Thanksgiving um, people will be gathering at, at both churches to to decorate the sanctuaries and other things that usually get decorated um, at Old Bethel at nine o'clock people will start gathering at Welltown at 10 o'clock um, so I just invite whoever wants to come and uh, just uh, and share in that time um, of just getting into the spirit um, as Advent will begin on Sunday the 29th which is a fifth Sunday 
Um, and so, as you know, both churches, we take a special offering on the fifth Sunday for, for different uh, projects and support. And so just a little heads up that the fifth Sunday is coming. Uh, once again, obviously, we're not in worship together today to receive an offering. But um, I do encourage you to um, set aside anything that you would have given today in worship or uh, mail it in if you want to do that. Um, just to make sure that the ministries of the, both churches are able to continue um, even in these couple weeks of not being together. Um, unfortunately, so many of our ways that we do things, the ministries that we support, um, they're ongoing. Um, and the upkeep of the building and other, other expenses are still there. And so your, your continued support in, during these couple weeks of not gathering like it was for many, many weeks earlier in the year. I'm just uh, grateful for your continued support and just ask that you continue to, to do that as you're able um, until we, we meet again, which again, hopefully will be next Sunday. So um, I once again welcome you to worship this morning and um, hope that this time will be a time of reflection, a time of preparation as we begin our, our time together. This morning. So I invite us all to go to God in prayer as we start this time. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for this day and for just being with us and giving us our, our ne daily needs. The things that we need to go on each and every day, we, we just give you thanks. We ask that your spirit be with us as we worship this morning. Uh, we know that we are not gathered as a church family, but hopefully um, each of us has family around us or which family we can reach out to and talk to and, and know that they are there as you are there with us and that your spirit, that your son is with us always. And so we just ask that you be with us in this time of worship as we give thanks for this day, for the gifts that you give to us and the trust that you impart into us. We thank you and ask you to open our hearts, open our minds as we hear your word for us today. In your holy name we pray. Amen. And so as we begin this morning, uh, we're going to um, sing again. Um, so this morning we're going to sing first, uh, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. Um, another, I think, probably a pretty familiar song. Um, it's on uh, number 89 in the hymnal, if you happen to have that. But um, I would imagine that a lot of you probably know um, a lot of this already. Um, so just sing along as you're able, um, as we uh, just uh, celebrate all that God has given to us. And just um, as I was practicing going through the words of the song this morning, some of these words really stuck out to me. Um, right now. Um, so I, just because of the, the climate that we've been in, uh, just something, so a few, some of these words really are very impactful, even though they were written um, many years ago. So let us sing together, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee.
scripture reading this morning, um, our psalm, is from Psalm 1, is, is Psalm 123. So it's a supplication for mercy. To you I lift up my eyes, O you who are enthroned in the heavens as the eyes of servants. Look to the hand of their master as the eyes of a maid, to the hand of her mistress, so our eyes look to the Lord our God until he has mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy upon us. For we have made more than enough of contempt. Our soul has had more than its fill of the scorn of those who are at ease, of the contempt of the proud. And our second reading this morning, our, the scripture, our sermon text, um, is Matthew 25, verses 14 through 30. Uh, it's the parable of the talents. For it is as if a man, going on a journey, summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one, he gave five talents. To another, two to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, and saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of the master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow, and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers. And on my return, I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him, and give it to the one with ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given. And they will have a, an abundance, but from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Once again, let us pray. Almighty God, we once again ask your spirit to be with us as we continue to reflect on your word this morning. May the words that I say be, be your word spoken through me, and that each one of us may be filled in, in, in a new way and receive your words today. We ask this in your son's holy name. Amen. Get some water here. So 
So when I tend to read this parable, I, I have to think that this is probably a, a, an investment person's uh, favorite parable, uh, because it even has Jesus talking about getting a good return on your investment. Uh, my brother uh, became a financial planner when I was in seminary. Um, so, of course, he started me um, into investing into my retirement at, at that point when I was still a student. Um, I was working at a local church doing youth ministry and some other education ministry work in that church. And, and so I was able to set aside about $25 a month to, to go towards my, my, my IRA and kind of investing into my future. Um, something I know I would not have been doing if he had not been in that position and wanting to make sure I was getting ready for, for my future many, many years out. But when we look at this particular passage, it's um, interesting to look at this word talent, um, this, this Greek word that they used for, for, um, for money um, in, this, in this parable is now become something that we really think more about our abilities or our, our gifts. Um, but a talent in, in, in biblical times and in, in the story where Jesus is telling um, is, is a large sum of money. It's even bigger than what you're probably thinking right now. It's, it's much, it's larger than that. It was almost an unthinkable sum of money. It's, it's kind of hard even to translate into modern amounts. Uh, most commenta commentators settle for, for years instead of, uh, of a, uh, an amount. It is equivalent, they will calculate, to 15 years of labor. So that's meaning if you worked for 15 years in your job, got paid regularly, never spent a penny of it, what you have sitting there in the bank would be a talent. So it's probably a lot more money than what you were kind of thinking it was. And now this master is giving to his slaves three times that much or five times that much. That's five times 15 years worth of labor. That is really a lot of money. But first I want us to look at and think about our, the way that we think about talents, our, um, our gifts, our abilities, the, these, these things, these talents that are given to us all as from God, as, as gifts. Now talents may be simple or complex. They may be visible or behind the scenes. They, they take various uh, forms including speaking, uh, playing an instrument, baking, uh, teaching, singing, healing, offering hospitality, counseling, administering, and, and so many. I mean, many. So many different talents, gifts, abilities that we are given. But they must be done in the spirit of humility and love. And also for the benefit of the community. That's what God gives us these gifts and talents for. God gives the talents, the servants use the talents. So notice in the story that Jesus told that all three servants are, are similar. Each was a recipient of a gift. None of them had done anything to deserve or to earn the gift. There was no sense of entitlement. In fact, even though they were expected to use the gift, the ownership remained with the master. We fast forward to the end of the story and an accounting is made of the servants. Two are described as good and faithful, and one is said to be wicked and lazy. I think we realize that the servants in the story represent each of us. And the master? Who's the master? Master's God. The purpose of the story is to push us to answer the question. Do you want to be like servant one or two, or do you want to be like servant three? What do we want God to say about us? Well, I think most of us would, would, would want, here, want, us to, want us to hear Jesus say, 
that we would are good and faithful servants. That I, and I want to be a servant like that. So what went wrong with this third servant? Well, again, we have to go to the end of the story to see what the problem was. Listen again to what the servant said to the master in verse 24. He said, Master, I know you knew you were a harsh man, harvesting crops you didn't plant and gathering crops you didn't cultivate. I was afraid I would lose your money. So I hid it in the earth. Here's your money back. The problem for the servant was that he had a total misunderstanding of the nature of the master. He had his mind made up about the master even before he received his talent. He thought the master was harsh and did not care about anything as long as he got his due. The servant did not really know the master. He just saw the shadow of the master and built his whole life on this faulty premise. So what is your understanding of God? Some of us may be secretly angry with God because we think God did something or, or didn't do something that we think God should have. As a result, our, our view of God is skewed. Our preconceived notions prevent us from seeing God as a God of grace. And as a result, we refuse to serve God with what God has given us. When we blame God, we end up burying our blessings. A faulty view of God can also lead to excuses. In verse 25, the, the third servant declares that the reason he didn't do anything with what he had been given was because he was afraid. His fear paralyzed him, and so he decided to play it safe. He hid the money to make sure it wouldn't be lost. A few weeks ago, we talked about that fear being paralyzing also. We have to be careful about that, that our fearfulness doesn't stop us from doing anything because that really speaks to where our, our faith and trust in God. This wrong view of God always leads to fear. We read, again, so I was afraid and went out and hid your talent in the ground. This is what led to the downfall of the servant and what causes us to fail. We think we know the master. We think we, we know God. We think we know God, a God of, that is full of wrath, who punishes people and causes sickness, and we build our entire life around the wrong God, and then that leads to fear. But did you notice that word that is repeated so many times in that verse? Let me read it to you just one more time. It says, Master, I knew you were a harsh man, harvesting crops you didn't plant and gathering crops you didn't cultivate. I was afraid I would lose your money, so I hid it in the earth. I, I, I. When we have the wrong understanding of God, it leads to fear, and life becomes about self, about me, about I. This is one of the problems that a lot of people have with contemporary music. The focus tends to be on what I get out of it, about the words in it say, I rejoice, not in giving thanks to what God has given. It's more about me and less about God. We're supposed to hear the story and say, I don't want to be like that servant. Instead, I want to be like the first two servants. I want to be like that. But notice the difference in the way the first two servants understood the nature of the master. When they approached the master, they both say, sir, you gave me. You gave me. The NIV translated, master, you entrusted me. The servants knew the master. They didn't see a harsh, tyrant-type person. Instead, they saw grace, kindness, trust. So you see, our understanding of God affects everything about us. The story is truly, it's truly amazing. Those who first heard it must have thought that Jesus was out of his mind. 
The story went against everything someone living in the first century saw as a normal, as, as saw as normal. In the normal scope of things, the story makes no sense. If we focus on the story about money, I mean, this whole entrusting a slave to have five, five times the 15 years worth of wages. So what is the real gift in the story? Is it the talents or these bags of gold? The third servant saw, God, saw the gold as the gift presented by the master. But the real gift is trust. The story is not about how much the servants were given, but that the master trusted them at all. The size of the gift in the story really doesn't matter. The sum of the money given was uh, 120 years of wages, but did you notice that the master referred to it as a little? He said, you have been faithful in, in handling this small amount. So now, I will give you many more responsibilities. If everything belongs to God to begin with, what we are given is always small in comparison. If we were talking about the gift as being possessions, the master doesn't need what the servants bring back. The gift that is given is grace. This gift is trust. The appropriate response to grace is being shown trustworthiness. I'm sorry. The appropriate response to grace to being shown trustworthiness is trust returned or faith demonstrated. If this was a story was really about money, um, there may have been a, a fourth character in the story, that investments person. Um, and we look through it as the eyes of the 401ks and the IRAs. Um, they're someone who took the money and instead of using it or burying it, um, invested it and then lost it all. Through the lens of money, that would have made the story probably more realistic. But you see, the story is not about money or possessions. The story is about trust. When we take a risk for the master, for God, Based on trust, there are no losers. Faith, trust, acted upon always produces more faith. So as we are nearing the end of the year, looking at what hopefully will happen in 2021, um, we have the opportunity to evaluate how much we trust God. Or better yet, how much God has entrusted to us. Each of us has been given something, our, our talents, our, our, our money, our, our, or otherwise. Um, so the question, how will you use that gift to give back to God? Do you trust the church to use what you give to benefit the most people through its ministries? Do you trust God to, enough to give back some of what you've been given? Maybe more this coming year than what you have been. As your faith grows, your trust in God grows, and your ability to in, in trusting grows. The issue is trust. God says, my gift to you is trust. I trust you with all that you have. Will you trust me? Our understanding of God affects what we do. What we do with God has given us what God has given us demonstrates what we believe. Trust yields more trust. Again, Jesus said to those who use well what they have been given, even more will be given, and they will have an abundance. This parable reveals the eternal consequences of our decision, to bury or not to bury our talents. The faithfulness reward is, is twofold. First, there is an increase in that responsibility. But second, there is a joy. The joy comes through satisfaction, that a good deed has been accomplished. For God, for others. It's not necessarily an ecstatic, wild-eyed, spontaneous expression over, of jumping up and down joy. Rather, it's that deep, settled peace in our hearts. 
that joy that passes all understanding. You know, that joy, 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 joy down in your heart. Could break into a song right now, but I'm not going to. But that's how we can show our trust in God. By taking what God has entrusted to us, using it as God wants us to, and returning back twofold, fivefold what God has given to us so that it can keep multiplying and being shared with, with the world as, as, we, as we serve God in the world today. Amen. I invite us now to once again go to God in prayer um, as we pray together this morning. Um, once again, if you have a prayer concern that you want to lift up, um, I invite you to share that in, in the chat, um, either here on, on Facebook or if you're watching this on YouTube. Um, and also just to let people know that you're there for them, that you're, that you're worshiping together and that you are um, just being part of the body of Christ in, in the scattered way that we are today. So I ask us to ask you to, to go to God in prayer with me at this time. Let us pray. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, our friends, our neighbors, and for all those who are alone. We pray for our communities, for our country, and for our world. For all who work for justice, for freedom, and for peace. We pray for the just and proper use of your, your creation, of your world. For the victims of hunger, for fear, for injustice, and oppression. We pray for all those who are in danger who are in sorrow or any kind of trouble. We pray for those who minister to the sick, to the friendless, and to the needy, for those who serve through ministries like Watts. We pray for the peace and unity of your church, We pray for all who proclaim the gospel and for all who seek the truth. We pray for the leaders in the Church Universal, for the leaders in the United Methodist Church, for the Virginia Conference, and for the Winchester District, and for pastors who, who minister in, in their local churches for all who serve God in their churches and paid and volunteer ways, who give so much time, energy, resources. And, O oh God, we pray for our own needs and for those that are close to us on our hearts today. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of, of our lives. We exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We give thanks for all those who have died in the peace of Christ and for the promise of your eternal kingdom. In Christ, you have called us to eternal glory. And it is in Christ's words that we pray to you at this time. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, 
and the glory forever. Amen. As a closing song this morning, um, I just wanted us to, to sing a short song. Um, I believe it is in the faith we sing, which, um, but it's uh, Lord be glorified, or in my life, Lord be glorified. Um, so I just, um, you maybe know it. Um, word, the words and the verses can are interchangeable and can change. So we're going to say, in my life, Lord be glorified. In my song, Lord be glorified. And in your church, Lord, be glorified. So I invite you to um, sing along as we just close our service this morning with just glorifying God. So as you go out to your day today, and until we, we gather in person once again, I pray that God's peace will be with you, that you put your trust in God who has uh, gone before you and has entrusted you with, with so much, your life. Um, go now the blessing and love of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, this day and always. Amen.